again coming up on this week's new show. We've got results from the latest round of the UCI World Cup cyclocross and the Super Prestige, the Ghent six-day track event, more news from Fabian Cancellara, some sad news coming from France, GCN Strava Club and the latest GCN competition, which this week is Decent Descent. Well, if last weekend belonged to the current world champion Sven Nace, then this weekend was certainly dominated by former world champion Niels Albert of the BKCP Power Plus team. In Saturday at Coxeter for the latest round of the UCI World Cup, he soloed to victory 32 seconds ahead of his nearest challenger, which was Francie Marie of the Francis de Jure team. Albert took advantage of his favourite sandy conditions and now lies fourth overall in the UCI World Cup competition, still behind the overall leader at the moment, which is still Lars van der Haar. The following day saw Albert win again at the latest round of the Super Prestige, 15 seconds ahead of van der Haar himself. And thanks to some misfortune from Sven Nays, Albert has also stormed into the overall lead in that competition. Over in the Women's World Cup, it was Katie Compton who took a relatively comfortable victory, one minute and eight seconds ahead of her nearest challenger, Sanna Kant, with Nikki Harris of the Telenet Fidea team in third place. Compton now holds a 30-point lead overall in that competition. The sand was hard. It was definitely heavier. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that wet, so it was hard to ride through, and then I felt like I was, I was a little bit lacking the power, so I, didn't, uh, I struggled riding it, so I just ran it. So it was hard, and hard in the legs all around. And also in Belgium, the Ghent Six Day concluded on Sunday with Jasper de Boist and Leif Lampeter of Top Sport Vlander and taking the honours ahead of local favourite Ilio Keita and his partner, Wim Strotinger. GCN were out there for the penultimate day of the event and newbies to six day racing ourselves, we learnt a lot, not just about the track events themselves, but also about how best to watch them. Stay tuned to the channel where we'll be bringing you a beginner's guide to six day racing. After much criticism from fans and journalists about the route for the last two years, organisers of the Tour of Flanders have made some changes for 2014. It will no longer have a finishing circuit and they've taken out a lot of the long flat sections at the end. Next year, the Koppenberg, the infamous Koppenberg, will come at just 45 kilometres to go and then after a lot of ups and downs, the last climb will be up the Paterberg, just 13 k's before the finish. Local rider Sepp Van Mark has already been out training along the course with his brother and on Twitter posted his contentment saying it would lead to much more positive racing again. Whilst we were in Belgium, we also spoke to Freddie Martins about the route, a winner of 374 races in his career. He should know what he's talking about. I think it will be better. Uh, in the last uh, 100 kilometers, they start with the Koppenberg and then during the last hour they have to to climb the six uh, last uh, little hills, so it will be good. Fabian Cancellar was on last week's new show where he stated his ambitions to tackle the world hour record in 2014, but he's back on this week because in a recent interview with Belgian television, he hinted that his current contract with Trek, which expires in 2016, might well be his last. The 32-year-old Swiss rider has already won the Tour of Flanders, Milan, San Remo and Paris-Roubaix at least once each, and of course he's won the World Time Trial title four times. He hinted though that another three years on the road might take its toll. Is he already one of the greatest road riders of all time, or is there plenty more he can achieve over the next three years? You can let us know your thoughts and comments in the section below this video. In another TV interview, this time taking place in Luxembourg with the RTL channel, former sports director with Lance Armstrong, Johan Brunil, has stated that he probably won't be making a return to the sport of cycling. Brunil is currently facing lots of different charges from the US Anti-Doping Agency and he's rumoured to be writing a book detailing his version of events from the time that he was in charge of the US Postal and Discovery Channel teams. <laughs> Former French professional Arnaud Coyot has tragically died on Sunday afternoon after being involved in a road traffic accident that morning. Coyot turned professional in 2003 with the Cofidis team but more recently he spent two seasons with the Sour Soya Sun team before retiring at the end of 2012. Our sincere condolences go to his friends and family. On to the GCN Strava Club and now we've got 1,735 members and for the second week running, the longest distance ridden was by Louis-Pierre Dupuis at just under 850 kilometres. Longest ride of the week was Steve Owen at 337 kilometres and most amount of climbing was Dorgali, an incredible 40,661 metres. This week's member of the week though is from Finland, Pike Janssen, Year to date, he's ridden 6,121 kilometres in a time of 233 hours, an average of 170 kilometres per week. However, a special mention goes to Eddie Kammer from Milan, who did this ride entitled Get the Food Skidding on Wet Streets. It was only 8.4 kilometres, but it sounds like great fun. 
As is suggested in the title, to get a special mention, you need to do a special ride. So if you think you're up to it, upload your ride to Strava, join the GCN club, and hopefully you'll be on the show next week. On to our Facebook competition now, which this week has the very catchy title of Decent Descent. Yes, we asked you to post pictures of your favourite downhills and we had some absolute corkers. Here are a few of our favourites, starting with Tony Smith, who was snap descending with a very close friend, Brendan O'Brien sent in this one from Lookout Mountain, whilst in Pikes Peak, it was Sarah Alder who took this photo. Over in Poland, Piotr Kolodzie took this one, whilst Duncan Huey posted this, and he said, this is not a very long descent, but it's fun actually. However, our winner of this week is Oliver Bridgewood, who took this photo before descending down the Stelvio in Italy. Oliver, you're winner of some gold dust. A GCN water bottle. This is one I caught earlier. Continuing on with the catchy, or maybe just ridiculous titles, next week's competition is called Colossal Commute. Yes, we want you to upload pictures of your daily commute into work, and next week we'll pick out some of our favourites and a winner on this new show. Tech news this week comes from Italy, and in fact, the Campagnolo factory, where we've got our hands on these, the new Campagnolo Bora wheels. Now, you might have heard that name before, that's because they've been around for some amount of time, but only in a 50 mm rim version. This one is a little bit shallower at 35 mm, which also cuts the weight down towards 1200 grams, which is not too dissimilar to their climbing wheels, the Eperons, and but you've of course got the much more aerodynamic advantages. These are the wheels that Nara Quintana used this year at the Tour de France to come second overall behind Chris Froome, so they're certainly more than capable in terms of a wheel set. They've got fully ceramic wheel bearings, which means that when Cambag here put it into one of their jigs and spin it at 500 RPM, it takes a full 46 minutes for it to come to a halt. I've been here for just over 50 minutes now, so I think I must have spun it at 700 RPM, but I'm not too worried because GCN pay me 500 pounds an hour. So the more the better, really. But a really, really functional wheel set, which has also got a special 3 diamond braking surface, which will give you the same kind of braking performance that a normal aluminium rim will give you, but with, of course, the advantages that carbon brings. At the end of this year, we at GCN will be taking a much needed holiday. So instead of your usual news show, we're going to be having our first ever annual awards. Who's going to be picking the winners? Well, you are, of course. On our Facebook page, we've now got a survey where you can cast your votes for your favourites in the following categories. Rider of the year, performance of the year, best newcomer, favourite GCN video of the year, favourite cycling moment, flop of the year, subscribers rider of the year and subscribers photo of the year, biggest win, and most exciting race of the year. We'll be giving out random prizes for those of you who take part, so we invite you over to our Facebook page after this new show to cast your vote. We've got plenty more great content for you on the channel this week. Already on Monday, we released the latest of our mechanical videos, which showed you how to chew a wheel. Tuesday is Newsday, that's this show. Wednesday, we've got some training tips for the winter, and on Thursday, we've got top 10 cycling moustaches. Then that evening, I'm hosting a live hangout with Matt Stevens where we'll be answering all of your questions to do with cycling. On Friday, Klaus Van Torn, a professional cyclocross rider, shows you how to choose different tyres for different weather conditions. Then on Saturday, the Garmin chiropractor Matt Rabin uses his pupil Dan Martin to show you how to use a foam roller. Finally, on Sunday, we've got the latest of our bike profile videos, which this week features the Ridley cyclocross bike from ex-world champion Bart Wellens. Tweet of the week this week comes from Lynn at Podium Insights, who had the good fortune or good timing to capture this photo, simply saying, face plant. I've never seen somebody take the term burying your head in the sand quite so literally. That's all from me for now. Join us again at the same time next week for more news from the world of cycling. Well, we've just about come to the end of the fifth night of this six day track event in Ghent. Plenty of drinks have been flowing. Plenty of drinks have been flowing. I've had at least eight mineral waters by now. Other people seem to have slightly other drinks. But all in all, it's been an absolutely fantastic evening. It's more varied than muddy fields. And the length of the season means that conditions can vary wildly from 25 degrees and sunny in September to potentially below freezing from December onwards.